this is the section in Prague I see a city uh, about the old lady who pushes the pram around with a doll um, it carries the subtitle mad woman which I think perhaps today and in English might not be entirely politically correct and the tale goes I must change my glasses. This okay. is too much, too much to read in distance glasses. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. That's fine. We might even leave that in. Um, but we, anyway. Right, sorry. Okay. To start again. Indeed. This is the section in question. Years ago, I used to meet her on National Avenue. She was one of Prague's characters. She might have been the embodiment of all those seduced and abandoned women with which 19th century Czech literature so abounds, the most famous being Božena Nemcová's deranged Viktorka. Last century, Bridge Street in Malá Strana was the haunt of crazy Tereska. She had been seduced and then abandoned by a Prussian officer, set off into the wide, wide world to look for him, came back, they say, after a year, and then, out of her mind, roamed the streets of Malastrana until her death. They called her Queen of Prussia. I recently read in a magazine about the Countess. Her great-grandmother, she insists, had been a Spanish infanta. The Countess was carried off by an SS man to Ravensbrück. Then, when he'd had his fill of her, he passed her on to others. Today she is over 80. She's even had a part in a film. You can tell her by a blonde wig extraordinary clothes and tall hat. Made up like a puppet, she wanders Stare Miesto. Maybe there's something in the air of this city that at given intervals, every fifteen or twenty years, engenders these deranged characters, seduced and abandoned, much as, according to Jewish legend, the golem appears in the ghetto every thirty years. I expect that even that crazed old lady I used to meet in National Avenue in the early 1970s was a product of the city's atmosphere. Ahead of her, she would push a battered ramshackle pram in which a doll with its eyes closed lay in a confusion of dirty rags. I recently met that mad woman again. Perhaps time goes into a walk during these months. Her or some other whose story had just entered this fi its final stage. The point is, all these creatures are as alike as peas in a pod. I met her outside the Albert Ross publishing house. This time, too, she was pushing a dilapidated pram that hobbled on one wheel. In it was the same confusion of rags, beneath which was the hump of a doll, but its face wasn't visible. The old lady looked neither right nor left, so she kept bumping her pram into people, who then hurled abuse at her. You mad old hag! And suddenly an apple came flying through the air, probably thrown by the little girl standing outside that shop with the sign in Spanish Casa Pascual. The old lady let out a groan and pounced on the uncovered doll. Then I saw its face. It had a dusky olive, dark colour, its southern eyes seeming to turn away from the alien, hostile people. It struck me as familiar. Where had I seen that face before? As the old lady's trembling hands fiddled with the rags and tried to wrap the doll in them, amazingly she didn't even notice the apple which had a bite out of it. She left it lying next to one waxy yellow little hand. A bit of blue fabric glinted in the pram, perhaps gold brocade. After wrapping the doll, head and all, she proceeded on her way, drove her pram under the arcade. Two or three lonely candles were still burning there. Then she must have turned into the Metro Palace pal passage, because I lost sight of her. I couldn't shake off the image of that doll. Not until the night, when I couldn't get to sleep, did it dawn. The next day I set off at once. Fortunately the church was open. The congregation was gathering for evening service. There it was, standing in its silver case with its glass doors. It has a crown on its head. It is holding an orb, which you check is a royal apple, in its left hand, giving a blessing with its right, averting its gaze from the strangers. Its little face is dusky olive, strikingly southern. After all, it comes from Spain. That day it was dressed, on certain days they redress it, in a green gown which, as the inscription says, was embroidered by none other than Empress Maria Theresa. 
The statuette is said to have lain during the Thirty Years' War among the junk behind the altar with its arms knocked off, until it was found by a monk, Cyril, and then it started performing miracles. Now it stands radiant in all its beauty in the Church of Our Lady of Victories in Malastrama. But during the day, when the church is closed, a crazy old lady drives the Bambino di Braga, that infant Jesus of Prague, around the city in her pram. <laughs>